and welcome back. A couple of months ago, I shared a video unboxing and trying some new symbols I got from the great folks over at Bosphorus. Part of this edition included adding some more unique sounds to my kit, and for me, that was probably most evident through this 18-inch effects crash I added to my collection. Originally, I suspected this sound would be something I call on just once in a while, but it very quickly became a staple in my kit, especially amongst my jazz gigs. I typically gig out with only the bare necessities, but I really enjoyed adding this crash for its ability to have a stark impact while decaying fast and getting out of the way. The sound is similar to a china, and I used to own a great china swish cymbal with rivets, and I loved using that in a big band setting. Over time, I experimented with adding a sizzle chain to this cymbal to get a similar effect, but with the amount of holes throughout the surface of the cymbal, I found that the sizzle chain would fall through these holes and really ruin the ability for the cymbal to ring out and get the sound I was going for. So as many people do, I decided I'd add some rivets to this cymbal to get the best of both worlds. I've drilled out a number of cymbals for rivets in the past, but honestly I prefer using a chain because rivets are not as easy to remove at a moment's notice for that more standard sound. Additionally, I despise moving cymbals with rivets to and from cymbal bags as they tend to get caught on the fabric, or worse, your hand. But as I was in the unique situation where a sizzle chain wasn't a sustainable option, a series of rivets made the most sense. I usually have a few of these on hand, but at this time, I didn't, so I quickly searched around online to purchase some from one of the music manufacturers. Since a rivet really isn't something unique to the drum world, I decided I could take a quick look on Amazon, and I was happy to see some brass-plated split rivets, almost identical to the kind provided from Bosphorus, for just $8 plus shipping for a pack of 50. I decided I'd give this a shot and put in an order and waited for them to arrive. A couple days later, my package had arrived, and I grabbed one of my other rides to quickly compare the rivets. Although very similar in length, thickness, and color, these Amazon ones had a slightly larger head. Not a huge deal, so I decided to go ahead and move forward with these and get this crash drilled out. There's a few different strategies for placing rivets, but the most common are a tight cluster of multiple rivets all right next to each other, or an array spread evenly around the circumference of a symbol. In my case, it made the most sense to work around the symbol evenly to pair with the whole pattern already existing. I ended up using the larger pre-existing holes to get my general location, and then measured in an inch and a half from the edge to get my final placement for all four rivets I'd be adding. I then took this cymbal up to my garage to get these holes drilled out. Before I got started drilling into the cymbal at all, I took a thin piece of scrap wood and did some tests with different sized bits until I got the fit that I like. Unlike drilling for many things, a tight fit really isn't desirable for this use, as you want the rivet to be able to vibrate freely around after you hit the cymbal. I used a punch before drilling to give myself a place for the drill bit to securely sit on the cymbal and avoid it from sliding, and then I went ahead and drilled the hole through the cymbal into a 2x4 piece of scrap. I added a rivet through and checked to make sure everything worked nicely, and once I felt good about it, I used a flathead screwdriver and pliers to pry the ends of the rivet and spread the tails to keep the rivet in place for good. After that, I just went ahead and repeated the same process three more times until I had all four rivets in place. And just like that, the cymbal was now ready to go and get back in the gigging rotation. I recorded a quick demo of this cymbal to compare with the original demo from the unboxing video, and just like before, I'm using a two mic setup with a Shure KSN32 mono overhead and an SE Electronics V kick on the bass drum.
All in all, I'm happy with the results of this project. I'm sure there are a few people out there who will be upset I drilled through this symbol, but for anyone who's going to complain about that, have you looked at how many holes are already in this symbol? I think the rivets give this symbol a really unique voice, and it's quickly becoming a part of my sound. And isn't that what we all want? To find instruments and tones that help us express what we're trying to say musically? For anybody looking to add rivets to your cymbals, I'd probably experiment with a more reversible option, like a sizzle chain at first, but I understand it's not a totally interchangeable sound for some. When it came to picking a style of rivet to use, I much prefer to use the split rivet kind, because it's a lot easier to pry the tails up vertically again, and remove if you change your mind about it later. I'm sure you could find a lot of great options from all the cymbal manufacturers, but in the end, to get a pack of 50 rivets for around $15 with shipping, this was a great deal and leaves me plenty to use in the future if I ever find myself needing more. If you have any experience with cymbal rivets or any thoughts on my cymbal here, leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on future video releases. Until next time, thanks.